So I decided it's probably time that I should show people how I use my programmable stick or the latest version that I've built of it, partly for people who are interested in building their own um, or getting some ideas for things they can do, and I guess partly for people who think that frame data comes from the magic frame data tree, um, who might actually find out that it's quite a lot of kind of effort and grind to get the data out. And so what I've got is just a straight Hori Real Arcade Pro V3 SA, and which is one of my favourite sticks. I've got a Arduino here. I won't pull it off, but basically it's the bit underneath. Um, it's the old, well, one of the oldest versions, um, which is mainly there just to show that any version will work. And there's an LCD screen with a keypad shield here. It's got a button, four directions, and a reset key. Um, and that's kind of the control center for everything that gets done. You can see there's wires coming off here from the pins of the Arduino. They are connected onto alligator clips. Those alligator clips are hooked onto the buttons of the Arduino. And I've got a little, well, I've got two free wires here, and you can use those. One's um, on and one's off, and you can work the, use those to work out where you attach your alligator clips to. Um, so, the stick still just works like a normal stick. Uh, it doesn't work, unfortunately, if you turn the Arduino off and leave everything connected. Um, I haven't found a way to get around that. Um, just while I'm there, I should probably put a disclaimer in. As you see, I've kind of this is all homemade. I'm not an electrician, I'm not a computer scientist. So if anyone chooses to follow in my footsteps, they're doing it at their own risk uh, to themselves and to their hardware in that, you know, I don't have formal training in this. I've just done everything by experimentation um, and I'd encourage everyone else to, but they have to uh, be aware of what they're doing. Certainly if anyone has got suggestions or safer ways of doing it, uh, I'd be most keen to hear. Toodles of SRK had suggested using 250 ohm resistors just to minimise the chance of excessive um, ampage going through and potentially frying something. I have kind of been doing this for four or five years though and haven't had a problem so far. Um, just quickly before we begin, I did mention Toodles and I'd just like to shout out to Toodles and Rufus from Shorukan who are always helpful. Um, this whole thing started by a guy called K.O.D. or Cody K. from Virtual Fighter or S.R.K. respectively, who did the first kind of groundwork on using Arduinos, um, and Slapper Joe, one of the Australian Brisbane people, who helped me just with the initial build. So, like we said, it's just a uh, normal joystick. It's kind of... It, it will record for 360 frames across eight buttons, so you can... Press a button when you're in mode zero, and it'll record something. You can scroll up and down and see what's recorded for each frame. So it's just noted that I've pushed all four buttons on frame one. And we can go to mode one, and just clear that, and play it back. And so if we wanted to record a few different things, we could play those back. And that's one frame each. The timing is pretty tight. And so that's kind of the first two things that it does. You can input commands and record them frame by frame and you can play those back. Mode 2 is just normal recording, like a, uh, you know, a mode that you'd expect to find in any decent training mode. And so if we just push that there and then look to play that back. Should do what we just did. And so that's all good. I'll just skip across quickly. Mode 9 is the reset mode um, and you can either use the onboard button which resets it completely or you can reset by going across there. And so let's say we wanted to do something actually worthy of a programmable stick. So I'm just going to hold down forward and press right punch. This is Tekken 6 as I'm sure everyone would have worked out. Um, and so Kaz's down forward or counter hit down forward two into electric wing golfers, one of the uh, trickier just frames in the game. If anyone wants to argue that it's a just frame, they're welcome to try. 
or that it's not a just frame because it definitely does require inputs on very specific frames. So anyway, you can see what we've done there. We've input down forward plus two, um, and we've input forward, then neutral, then down forward plus two. One of the things we can do is kind of scroll moves back and forth. And so say if there's a particular move like our adjust frame we want, so Paul's forward forward two one, if you'd input forward forward two one, and then you can scroll that one input up and down frame by frame until you find the specific um, frame requirements for its input. You can do that for a single um, input or you can do it for a series of inputs together and you can also kind of um, copy and paste where if you take a, a single frame and then just smear it above frames up and or lower. So we'll just take the, uh, the, the down forward plus two stays on frame zero and then we just need to find the appropriate frame for uh, where to put our uh, electric wind guard fist. What just happened there, um, one of the limitations of this keypad shield is sometimes it kind of typos and even though I'm pushing up it'll press left or right instead. Um, it's purely a physical limitation of the way that it reads the buttons. And so for my own kind of preferred setup I've got buttons instead of using this particular thing. But I mean, if you if you can tolerate that, it works well enough. So we'll just see where we are. We've taken the electric wing god fist up to frame 46. From memory, is about where we want to be. There we go. Um, so if we take it down to 45, it's going to be just a frame too early. Um, and then if we take it up to 47, it'll be a frame too late, and the electric wing god fist won't um, launch. So there you go, that's one of the trickier um, just frames in the game, done fairly easily. Mode 6 lets you change the timing, so it's 16, uh, 656 milliseconds per frame at the moment. That can go up or down, um, so if you had a, a PAL game, for example, you could change it to 20 milliseconds per frame. Yeah. The other thing you can do, so I might just reset at that point and get rid of all of that programming, and I'll clear the screen. Um, say if you wanted to loop commands, so CAS is useful for this again. Um, the wave dash is obviously one of his signatures. So if we just program frame by frame, forward, neutral, down, down, forward, forward, neutral, um, and then move into this game's, uh, or this programmable sticks um, loop function, basically you determine, in mode 7, you determine what frame to loop on, so that's about frame 6, and then in mode 8 you determine how many loops you want, so let's say we want 10 loops. And clearing the screen for you, there we go. Nice little wave dash there, pretty much as fast as um, computerly possible. And, and you can do things like that, loop a couple of times and then for example, da, 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 da. Mm, hello. doesn't seem to have worked quite. Anyway, presumably that's just a uh, input input requirement or limitation of the wave dash that you can't do it too quickly afterwards. That'd be a little project to uh, look into later on. So that's pretty much it. There's a few other little bonus features. Um, it seems that not all of the sticks or joysticks work the same. For this one, if you write the pins low, it'll push buttons, and if you write them high, it won't. It'll unpush. And whereas for other joysticks, that's inverted. So you can swap that around uh, with this program. The other thing, so, and it's pretty hard to see, but basically there's a function where you can swap the, uh, the first two pins, and so if you hook your left and right up to those, you'll be able to um, kind of change directions. So if you had done kind of a, a command and recorded it on the right hand side, and then suddenly the sides were swapped, you could just swap those two pins around, so left and right get swapped, and you can just keep going, um, which in the absence of a position reset is reasonably useful. 
So anyway, I'll throw up the code that I used for this. I've got slightly more advanced versions. So like I said, this is the uh, kind of one of the earlier versions of the Arduino. If you're interested in them, arduino.com is the website for them. Um, and they range from, I think, $15, $20 to, to more expensive for the newer ones. Um, the Arduino Mega, or 2560 Mega, is the one that I tend to use for my bigger projects. And whereas this one, I've basically got enough to control four buttons, four directions, that lets me do uh, 16 things for two players. So up, down, left, right, eight buttons, start, select, home, and turbo for, say, a PS360, and then across two players. Um, and there's an ad additional functionality there where you can either record for one player, two players, or both. Um, and playback and kind of move frames up and down for each player separately. Um, that's fairly much it. So I'll kind of leave it up to people if they want to make any comments. Um, I'll put a link to the code, which I'll probably throw up on Shoruken and Tekken Zaibatsu and Virtua Fighter. I hope that people get interested, certainly with um, Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown and Tekken Tag Tournament 2 coming out in the coming months. There's going to be a lot of questions, um, and I'm happy to investigate things that make sense to be done on a P-Stick. If it's something that would be just as easily done by people putting in some hard work, then uh, I'm probably going to send that one back to the sender. Um, so, thanks for your time.